This is Ray Ordonez. On April 1st, 1996, he's a rookie from Cuba debuting for the New York Mets on opening day. Down by three in the top of the seventh, things look like they're about to get worse. Until... Clayton around second, Langford going into second, and Clayton's gonna try to score! Ordonez threw it from his knees and they got him! From his knees! In the outfield! The Mets stormed back to win this game by one, with Ray making the difference with that unbelievable play. Ray made a lot of unbelievable plays in his day. He very well could be the best defensive player in MLB history if you just break down a bunch of his highlights. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We picked out a bunch of Ray Ordonez highlights to sift through today and go over why this is the smoothest shortstop there maybe ever was. Defensive statistics are an inexact and incomplete science, and Ray played before things like StatCast could provide numerical measurements on the individual defensive plays themselves. But seriously, just looking at them and talking about them does the trick here. He was that special. But before we do that, gotta cover our bases here. If you enjoy what you see here today, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel for more content like this. We've got some new hats in our shop too, if you think any of them fit your wardrobe. Alright, I'm too excited to wait. Let's talk about Ray Ordonez. A three-time gold glover at shortstop, Ray set the major league record for consecutive games without an error at shortstop. Two games into the 2000 season, Ray did what was basically impossible for him. He messed up. Just want to get that out of the way to show that he is in fact a human being, but he made up for it later on in that game. Cut off by Ordonez and he throws out Sammy at first. See, shortstops don't typically run in front of second baseman on their side of the base, make a jump throw on the run, and have that throw comfortably beat a runner who was fast enough to steal 18 bases just two years ago at the time of this game. But when you're Ray Ordonez, you do this all the time. Up the middle, still a chance for Ordonez! Oh! At first base! I don't think I have to explain why that was awesome, but I will. Gladly. Name a time you saw someone other than Ray Ordonez go out of his way to snatch a ball headed right at the second baseman, like right at him, spin around, make a throw while sitting down, and have it be on target and on time to get the runner. How? This is not normal. Speaking of not normal, this next one's gonna go by really fast, so pay close attention. Ray is basically in a full split and catches a low flip from second base to get a runner out. How do you catch a baseball while also doing a split? I can't do a split. And if my performance in right field at the YouTubers vs. Real Baseball Players event taught me anything, maybe I can't catch a baseball as well as I thought either. I mean, professionals also mess that up too sometimes, so I don't feel as bad. Ray did both, at the same time. I dug up the context for this play on Baseball Reference, I think. It was the third out of the bottom of the eighth inning during a close game with a rally brewing. Huge clutch save for Ray to keep the Mets in the lead in that game. Little things like this play really do go a long way. Ray was the master of the little things. You know, some like this man, Hanley Frias, you don't. Yoshi and a ball nicely gloved by Ordonez. That might not have looked like much, but Ray has one goal here. Keep his foot on second base to get an out. The runner has one goal here. Absolutely obliterate Ray's shins. Ray, with very little time to spare while the pitcher is trying to recover the ball, keeps his feet in the perfect spot and even makes taking a shot to the leg look cool with how he spins out of it. And he finds time to bop the runner on the head after the play. Great players make small details like that look meaningless, but even that stuff can go a long way. Something as basic as foot placement and bracing for action can be what keeps this ball from getting thrown into center field and having the inning spin out of control. But while Ray had the little things down, he also could make the spectacular highlight reel play with his instincts too. I think you already knew that though. Line drive by Hernandez, oh! caught by Ardonius, two out. So Ray had to do all of the following to make this play. Jump as high as he possibly could, extend his arm as high as he possibly could, position it properly to catch a baseball hit on a line into left center field, 
and have the ball not drop out of his glove as he brings it back down between his legs. And there are Hall of Fame caliber professional athletes who can't even touch their toes. I can't touch my toes now, so I ain't never been a stretcher. And then, watch this. There's a ground ball that's headed right between Ray and the third baseman, more so on the third base side. It's on a fast track to left field. Ray gets to this ball, essentially flings it in one motion, almost in the way you'd skip a stone, and then look at this throw. It's a missile that's at least at eye level with the first baseman, maybe even a touch over his head. How do you throw a ball that well from this position? Like, what? <coughs> the runner even tries to slide to beat this throw sooner. Can't pull that off against Ray, though. This is part of what separates Ray from everybody else. You've seen shortstops make great catches. You've seen shortstops have great range. But what can make a guy who seems like an unreal defensive shortstop have less value than you'd think is their arms. Throwing errors can kill a shortstop. Meanwhile, there's Ray's throwing. Here's a slow roller to shortstop that Ray charges and decides to try to get an out at home plate with. This is usually a risky, if not automatically terrible idea. Ray gets the slow roller quick enough, makes a throw on the run that is in the exact position it needs to be to get an out. The catcher can keep his foot on a piece of the plate away from the sliding runner, and Ray's throw has pinpoint accuracy to not only save the run, but save his catcher from potentially being taken out by the runner. See, all these plays look cool so far, but the actual competitive advantage and value these plays bring are even more than meets the eye. So when two players both try to chase down the same ball, bad things can happen even for positions as separated as shortstop and center field. Because we've already established that Ray thought he can get to any ball on the field, here he is chasing down a fly ball to center field. Popped up shallow center, McRae coming, Ordonez out, both going, Ordonez reach it, gets it, and collides with McRae, Ordonez has the ball. Ray not only catches this ball, he does so while the center fielder slides down in a way that could very easily knock this ball out of Ray's glove, to put it lightly. He ends up absorbing the blow, but is positioned in such a way where both parties are relatively fine. A shortstop catching a ball and winding up behind the center fielder is unreal. And oh yeah, something I probably should have mentioned about every other great play he's made in this video, no shifts at this time. You know how in the last few years you'd see a lot more defensive positioning to one particular side of the field that can put the shortstop in much different spots than before? Or like when the third baseman could catch a ball in deep right field because of how they were placed on the field? None of that in Ray's time. All the more impressive now. And here, look, three guys are going after this ball. Ray dives for it, catches it because he's Ray, somehow avoids getting kicked in the head by the second baseman, and immediately just pops back up to make a throw. But above all else, what makes a defender memorable are their highlight reel plays. Derek Jeter was always considered such a great defensive shortstop because he could make the plays you'll see on ESPN 20 years later. Even though a visit to Reddit will correctly tell you his defensive analytics are not very good, Ray has the defensive stats, the little details pointed out this whole time, and some unreal plays to his name. So I've saved what I think are the two most amazing and aesthetically pleasing Ray Ordonez plays for last. Here goes. Ordonez keeps it in the infield and gets the force! Um, what? Ray Ordonez not only made a diving stop, when the ball squirmed away and made him turn his back to second base, he simply flipped it over his shoulder, falling backwards directly into the second baseman's glove for the out. I don't even care that the batter ended up being safe at first. He basically used the same bodily motions a baby would awkwardly use to play with blocks to record a fielder's choice. Unbelievable. But I think even more unbelievable is this play. From June 11th, 1996, bases loaded, two out. Pesco pops it up, left field line, not an easy play. Gilkey coming, reaching our door! So, somehow, a shortstop might have saved three runs from scoring. He dives past the left fielder, covering at least 100 feet of ground to get to this ball, extends his body as far as it can go, and catches it in fair territory. That ball only just barely stays in his glove. If that ball pops away, 
All three runners could come in. If almost anyone else is playing shortstop, that ball falls. Two runs probably score, and the inning continues. When you have Ray Ordonez, it's a piece of cake on another day that ends in Y. At his best, there was no better defender than Ray. But unless you were a Mets fan or a diehard baseball fan coming into this video, you probably didn't know about him. He weirdly didn't leave as strong a legacy as he should have. Like this is not a very good biography. There's two reasons for that. One, he had a very abrasive personality at times. One time he said he didn't want to play for the Mets anymore because Mets fans are stupid. Two, his hitting could never match his fielding. I mean, you basically have to be Tremendous Jackson from Jimmy Neutron to match the standard he set defensively. Because you know he was pretty much Craig Feldspar from Malcolm in the Middle at shortstop. The first four seasons of his career had just one home run in them each year. If you go by the OPS Plus stat, which is a tool for comparing players to the environment they play in and the competition around them where 100 is always average, Ray was 41% worse than the average hitter during his career. But that should go to show that while home runs put people in seats, baseball is far more than just hitting. Ray Ordonez had value, and he made every game he was a part of just a little more fun, a little more interesting, and a little more exciting. Let's give you one last Ray highlight play to end on. Reigns went, Posada didn't, and Ordonez with another remarkable play, they might get three. Wow! 